Okay, Commissioner Ranella? Here. Commissioner Hightower? Here. Commissioner Webb? Here. Commissioner Goss? Here. And Mayor Butler? Here. Uh, you've had the minutes of the meeting of October 24th. Any addition or correction? Not to be approved. The minutes of the meeting of uh, November the 7th. Any addition or correction? If not, they will be approved. Uh, looks to me like we have some visitors with us this evening. Would you want to tell us what this is all about? I think he wants to speak to the council. Yeah, let's yeah, come right on. Up here? Yes. Yes. Right the microphone? Please. Do I get to sing? Yes. Uh, We'd love it. Don't worry. Hi, my name is Rich Henley. Um, thank you for having me here tonight. Um, I represent a special Olympics agency called the Lightning Bolts. We're local. We've got athletes everywhere from Anna and Viana on out to uh, Fairview, Fairfield. We've got them from all over the place. Um, about 40 athletes. We started about 10, 11 years ago with a, an agency of one. That's my son, John Henley, right there in the orange. The famous John Henley, if you will. Um, and we have, over the past 10 years, um, grown to the point where I've got over 40 athletes now competing in 12 different sports. We stay busy year-round. Our problem is, and the reason that we're here today is, um, like so many of us today, our problem is finances. When I only had five or 10 athletes, my wife and I, um, we just covered expenses out of our pocket. With 40 athletes doing 12 sports, it has gotten to be very, very burdensome um, keeping these guys active. We just came back from Lincoln, Nebraska. Our flag football team was invited to a national invitational tournament in Lincoln, Nebraska. And we went, we represented Illinois there. Um, we beat them all. And, um, but it got, that trip alone cost us about $4,000. I know that a city does not have the kind of money that they can just say, here you go, nice guy, good bunch of kids, here's five, six thousand dollars, go out and have yourself a good time. Can't do that. I will do whatever I have to do or whatever I can do uh, to finance and support these kids. Um, we, uh, we we have fundraisers all throughout the year. You'll see we're some of those annoying people that stand on the corner with buckets. Wherever they will give us a corner, we'll get out there and stand. Uh, we're selling raffle tickets right now. Anybody's interested in trying to win $500 before Christmas, we're selling raffle tickets. I think we're only selling about 400 tickets and we're giving away $800 in cash prizes. But the reason I am here is to appeal to anyone who has any avenue that may be able to help us financially. We are not asking, and I really hesitate to ask at any time, just to give money. Um, my kids are really capable. One of the things that I really stress with them is that they are members of the community and they need to be involved in their community. Uh, we stress fair play, we just sportsmanship, teamwork. Uh, my kids have become family. Um, I probably could have walked in here today with all 45 of them if I wanted to. But instead I brought along a couple um, a couple that I'm really proud of. We've got Eric Baum over there, the fellow with glasses. In 2003 he um, represented the United States at the World Games in Scotland and Ireland. Yeah, well, they all talk the same. That's close enough. Yeah. Okay. One of those lands over there. Yeah. Um, Great Britain. Actually had a medal on a little bit earlier that he received for uh, for his participation in those games. I think he won a silver medal in the long jump in the 2003 World Games. Sitting next to him is Marissa Prendergast. Marissa was the Area 15 um, Outstanding Athlete of the Year in 2014, was it, Marissa? Yes. 2014. Eric was the Outstanding Athlete of the Year in 2015. Uh, and because of Special Olympics, 
not only have we got some people out working now in the community, but they are a couple. And uh, wedding bells are in the future for them. But I really tried to work very, very hard um, to rise beyond just athletic competition and for the kids to, uh, to reach their potential. The little guy in the orange, that's famous John Henley. John was uh, the 2013 Outstanding Athlete of the Year for this region. And in 2016, he was chosen as the State of Illinois Inspirational Athlete of the Year. There are 23,000 athletes in Illinois and they only pick one. It's the highest honor that an athlete can be given. And uh, we're really proud of that. Um, it's the first time anybody from Southern Illinois has ever received that honor. I think we are. He's a five-time state champion powerlifter. He competes in nine different sports. Um, he was at the national championship games in Princeton, New Jersey in 2014. And he came home um, out of all the lifters in the nation. In his weight division, he finished second in the nation. Very proud of him. So we do a lot beyond running around on a track and field someplace. We, we, uh, we really try to make these athletes part of their, and a contributing part of their community. But it takes money. And um, I don't know what position the people here are in or what connections you may have. Um, we will do anything. We have offered to do landscaping for businesses, uh, pick up their trash, snow, shovel their snow, um, plant flowers for them in the spring, whatever we can, uh, we will do it to try to raise some money and we're just looking for help in that direction. I don't expect anybody to pull their checkbook out right quick. It would be nice if we had a $10,000 donor that uh, I could just lay back and say, hey, we're gonna have a great year, kids, let's go do it. But it, it doesn't work like that way, I understand that. And you know, we're, we're talking Southern Illinois and there's just not that much money floating around. And I won't get into the difference between us and Chicago. Um, but that's the reason we're here. We're here to bring awareness. Um, would you like you to meet a couple of these kids? Um, recognize that they are here. They are part of our community and we need to help them. We certainly commend you for all your good uh, effort and congratulate you. Um, you talked about a $10,000 donor. Uh, the, the city couldn't do that, but uh, I would recommend to the city council, if you would accept it, a, a donation of $1,000. Your Honor, we would accept it. You think you might take that? Huh? With great appreciation. And these guys will work for you. If you want for oh, hey, no, 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 no. We, we can make the donation and let them work for somebody someplace else. Uh, what's your pleasure, gentlemen? That motion, I have motion. Motion made and seconded. Call the roll. Commissioner Vanilla? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? I, I totally support this, but I was staying because it's not on the agenda. But I totally support your calls, though. Thank you. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. And Mayor Butler? Yay. Thank, thank you so you. much. Appreciate that, and thank add, all of you for being patient. Yes, this is the director of the hub. Yes, I might add too. We have, yeah. we have partnered, and I don't remember the specifics of the arrangement a year and a half ago or so. When you utilize the bus mm -hmm. recreation center, and we should continue our dialogue and, and ensure that these athletes have access. That would be interesting. To you. We we struggle. I right? um, just today finalized an agreement with Johnny Logan to let us use the pool. Yeah, right. I'm going to do that Memorial Day thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, really, I, I have I never two girls. I have one party. party what we generated in revenue. We I think there. we did pretty yeah. good. They just refinanced a bunch of bonds, so they're not hurting somebody. Well, there, there's something right there you can use that money for. Or Habitat for Humanity or something like that. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Uh, anyone else have something we need to take up? All right, J Justin. Yeah. 
Not a worthy cause, by the way. Yeah. Briefly, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, Justin Francis. I'm a sergeant with the Marion Police Department. I'm also the vice president of our local fraternal order of police, which is the fraternal side of the FOP. Uh, everything we do, um, we bring funds in for fundraisers and, and different events, and, and everything that we bring in goes back out in some sort of charitable donation. Uh, it's I'd spoken to Commissioner Hightower earlier in the week. Um, I know Commissioner Webb's been to it. Every year we do an annual law enforcement gala. Uh, it is basically a, a formal event that's a catered meal. Um, it's a band, raffles, uh, silent auction. The first year we did it, this is the third year. The first year we did it, we had about 400 guests. Last year it grew to about 600, and this year we're to about 1,200. So it continues to grow. We do it at the Pavilion. It's March the 18th, scheduled for this year. Uh, in order to, to do this, we need about 20 sponsors from the local community. We, we do this for going to Ison, uh, Pepsi, most of our large corporations uh, here in the city of Marion. Um, the FOP represents about 140 police officers and correctional officers in Williamson County, with about 30% of that being from the Marion Police Department. So we are the biggest organization that's in the FOP. The president of the FOP is Carl Gustantine. If anybody knows him, he's a detective over at Williamson County, and then I'm the vice president. So we do the vast majority of the legwork for, for this event. Um, I talked to, talking to Commissioner Hightower about seeing if the city of Marion would possibly be a sponsor for this event. Um, with the event, we have two giant video boards that go up that shows our sponsors during the event. I could get with Terrence and possibly try to get like a logo showing that the city of Marion proudly uh, recognizes and supports local law enforcement. Uh, there's also a flyer that goes out with that. Everything that we bring in from this event and other fundraisers goes back out in the community. We, uh, we sponsor the Special Olympics. We sponsor death beneficiary and the event an officer should die in the line of duty uh, or come down with a terminal illness. Um, also catastrophic incidents, fires, and things like that. We donate money to the family. We also do, it used to be called shop with a cop. The guy that coined that phrase now decided that's his phrase and you have to pay him to use it, so we just changed it and we call it cops and kids now. About 200 kids every year in, in Williamson County get to shop with the fraternal order of police. They go shopping with the police officer. We spend about $100 on each kid. Um, we're gonna try to grow it this year to probably 220, 225 if possible. Uh, the event that we make from the gala, golf scramble, and any other fundraiser that we do, every bit of it goes back into the community. So one of our big expenses that we have is obviously renting the pavilion uh, in order to put this event on. And I'd spoken with Jared earlier in the year, and, and that fee alone is, I think, $1,998 was the quote, which that's for the weekend. We need it for the whole weekend in, in order to do this. And I'd spoken to Commissioner Hightower about possibly seeing if the city would be interested in sponsoring this event. Out of those the <clears throat> cops with kids, how many are from Marion? The kids? Uh, of that, the, the two areas we do are Marion, Walmart, and Heron, Walmart. I can't, take, I can't give you an exact number, but out of, out of the 180 last year that we did, I would assume by looking at the applications, roughly 70 to 75, almost, some, possibly maybe 80 percent are from the Marion uh, school district alone. Justin, when you talk about uh, the uh, Pavilion. Now, what what all does that entail? The pavilion, as far as the the uh, the fee that we pay, rents it for Friday, which is our setup. Saturday, the event, and then Sunday for cleanup. And that's also with them coming in and helping and clean it up. We rent all of their tables. The capacity there is 1,200, and we use every bit of it this year. Um, so that's also the employee, as far as which I know Carlos is going now, but whoever Carlos's replacement is, usually comes in on the weekends, helps us with anything we may need. Uh, we do change some of the lighting out. The sound system guy has to come in. We have a live man, so the sound system guy has to be there for several hours. Um, and that's that's usually the, the fee that, that comes with it. Well, now that uh, expense, is, is that uh, due to the uh, pavilion, or is that uh, aside from the rental for the pavilion? That is, that's the, the, the rental that we pay the pavilion uh, for that event. The, the problem I'd had, and I, I address this with Commissioner Hightower. I do know there's some different financial situations as far as where the money comes from with the pavilion as far as his funding coming from tourism, I believe. Am I correct on that? Is it? Okay, yeah. And I just didn't want to short him. You know, I didn't want to approach the, the council and possibly ask for a waiver because I didn't want to know if that came out of his budget. I don't want to short him out on money. I didn't really know the way the funding, how it was set up there. I think Commissioner Hightower has made contact with Jared uh, about that. So 
I'm not, I'm not asking uh, for, a, for a set amount, but anything the city can do, uh, if they would like to sponsor the event, we would be appreciative. The, the event in total, uh, for me to put this event on, it, it cost about $35,000 um, for me to do this, but it ends up putting about $20,000 back into the FOP that we put back into the community. So just shop with a cop alone costs the FOP roughly twenty dollars to $25,000 a year. So. So, so you're taking all three banquet rooms for three we're, days? We're taking the whole pavilion, yeah. Oh. Yep. Yep, we take the whole thing, and it's full. I mean, we have photograph, uh, well, a couple of photographers that come in and do photographs for the event, and it's, it should be every bit of, of 1,200 people this year. It's a big event. Great board uh, sponsors it. Uh, I know Commissioner Webb was there last year. Yeah, it's very it's, nice. It's, it's, a, it's a formal suit and tie. Some people wear tuxes. Guys joke. They call it cop prom. But, yeah, there's a, there's a lot, lot of people there. What is the sponsor fee? Uh, there's not a set amount. Um, I, I'll tell you, typically what, what most of our sponsors do, what we shoot for, it takes me any, anywhere between thirty-five and 38000 for us to throw this event on. So we shoot for 20 sponsors at $2,000. A lot of these big sponsors are like Ice and Pepsi and stuff. Uh, that's into their marketing budget, and I understand if you can't do 2000 But anything that the city can do, that they're willing to do, we would be grateful for that. Very worthwhile calls. Well... What's your recommendation, Commissioner? I would recommend we give them the full two thousand. Well, wait a minute. What, no, no, wait, 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 wait a minute now. Let's right, back up here. Well, if we're going to do that, then we just waive the uh, the cost of the pavilion. I was going to say let's do that rather than to. Um, Is that fair? What would that do to Jared's budget, though? Yeah, that's a question. Well, don't worry about Jared's budget. Oh, he works for the to. city, and we are the city. I so mean, let's don't worry about that. We well, I, I personally worry about that because in the past we'd had we had a problem with that. And yeah, well, and I'm well, telling you that is no problem. Now, uh, would you move that we? We paid the uh, 1900 and some or uh, uh, waived that. It, it, would that be your motion? It's, I mean, it sounds like you're a little. Well, I, I'm just, I don't want, I understand that he works for the city of Marion, but if, if it's going to create a, uh, an issue with don't that. Don't worry about that. Well, I, I, do, I do worry about that. Well, because I'm this is for, not to. Well, I do. Unfortunately, well, I've got a heart, and, and I don't want that problem to, to create a there problem with Jerry. No problem, so put it out of your mind. Now, it seems to me that we ought to just waive the uh, fees at the pavilion and be done with it. Yeah, I, I can't go with that. What? I can't go with that. That not Why that not? way. Well, so we just write a check to the FOP from the. Then they're going to write a check to Jared. Yes. Well, why? Why don't we just waive it and forget we'll that? that Say, right? Steve, all mm -hmm. that work. Well, yeah. Lee's going to be here after the first of the year. Mm -hmm. She's, and we're going to do the same thing for her. Plus, plus, more. plus mm -hmm. the table. So. I mean, we, we, we do it in other avenues. So if we so. can guarantee that Jerry gets everything he needs, and I'll be for that as long as he's not shortchanged in any way. Well, he's not going to shortchange anybody. We're, we're taking money from the from the big and putting into the city stuff. So we're okay. <coughs> Well, we get that guarantee. Okay, all right, all right. I need a motion to waive the fees at the pavilion for this event. Commissioner? Do we have that I mean, motion? I, don't know. I mean, I, I support it, but I, yeah. I have to stay. You got a motion? Do we have a second? Yeah. Well, I think, I think, you know, what we need to do is is give him the guarantee we're going to do that, and then the next council meeting it be on the agenda. When's your meet the gala? Yeah. It's not till March. We're we're okay. way ahead. We got plenty of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's our promise to you. Yeah, and that's my thing is I, I'm a voice of one. I'm on a committee as well, so okay. I, I can't vouch to say that you know I, they just don't want a Jared to be wrong. Yeah. Well, see that is a guarantee. You'll get the fee, the pavilion waived. Period. Okay. And we'll act officially at the next meeting because it wasn't on the agenda for us. Yeah, time. absolutely. Okay, we wish you the best. Thank you very much. Yeah. 28th. 28th. Have Gustantine here. Okay, who else? All right. Uh, Steve, I guess you need to tell us about uh, Resolution 2016-20. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, a resolution that would allow me to uh, invest city funds in the Illinois uh, Metropolitan Investment Fund. It is an investment vehicle that's very similar to what the Illinois funds, we have money currently in it. Okay, uh, to give you a little bit of background, it's, about, it's made up of currently of about 276 municipality 
and other governmental units who pool their money together. Uh, the fund that we would invest in is called a is called a uh, I, IMET convenience fund. It's set up just like the LA funds, where uh, each dollar is, is is worth a dollar. There is no variation in the value uh, uh, of the dollar. Okay, it's uh, they currently have about 497 million dollars in total in that fund, and the majority of the money that they invest in. Is, is in uh, CDs, treasury notes, uh, probably in some, in some uh, repurchase agreements. Well, like I said, yeah, well, bank deposits, secured uh, certificates of deposits, and then they're all in collateralized or, or, backed by, or backed by other treasury notes and backed by a letter of credit from federal home loan bank. Do they get to invest in uh, stocks and bonds? No, no, none of that at all, none. Where do they make their money? CDs aren't paying anything. Right, well, they do, uh, the biggest part where they make most money off of is repurchase agreements where it goes out and invest it and then returns the money overnight. Uh, yeah, the returns aren't great. The returns right now are probably 0.50%. Half percent. But, uh, but, that, uh, but that's equivalent to the Illinois funds. And by doing this, it gives me a little bit more, more diversity. And that's why I like to have diversity, not have all, you know, all, you know the old theory about having all your eggs in one basket, but to be able to have it in various places. And that's why I um, would like to go with them. Before, I never did this before because Illinois funds you could use like a checking account and mm -hmm. still earn it. When I look at changes of Illinois funds, they're both on exactly the same footing. I see. And so that's why I would like to go with them and invest them. In fact, they're actually outperforming the Illinois funds just by a little tiny bit right now. So it wouldn't be much, but like I said, because of the diversity and because of the safekeeping, they're rated AAA by Moody's. Yeah. So I really can't get a more, you know, and, and, and so I can invest with them, and I'm not having to try to invest in all these different things, oh, okay, then you know, to come up with a rate that I couldn't how, come up with. How do we get our half percent? Half percent, it's just credited to us every month. Or oh, it's just credit. It's just credit, that's just like interest. Uh, and what do we got to do to get some of that out? I can, I can get it out, I can, all I have to do is fill out the paperwork and I can have it the next day. Without penalty? Huh? Without penalty? Without penalty. That's right. There's no penalty to it. I can, I can, I can have money out within 24 hours, just like I could at, at the Illinois funds. No difference. So, it's, so you're saying it's a win-win? I think so. Okay. Well, okay. be my motion to accept uh, or approve uh, Resolution 2016-20. Second. Go roll. Commissioner uh, Ranella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I, I have here in my hand uh, a recognition for uh, one Terrence Henry. And uh, this has to do with the National Association of Government Web Professionals, 2016 Pinnacle Awards. City County Small Population Group finalists. I think that uh, we find that Terrence is being recognized for his good efforts. In fact, I hope that he doesn't get too much recognition because somebody will try to hire him away if they haven't already. They already have. Yeah. So, congratulations to yes. you, and we thank you much. I appreciate it. Very good. You okay, it. what's the uh, American Tower Amendment to Lease Agreement? You got that, Gail? Yeah. Somebody's wanting to give us some more money for our tower down at the city lake. Well, well, let's listen to the details on yeah. this. Okay. Um, we have had since 2002 an agreement with a company that has changed names several times. It started out as Selco and ended up as American Tower that leases a piece of land at the Marion Lake. And they pay a lease, uh, they pay, uh, we get a certain amount of money every year, 
and they have a f agreements for five years. And then every five years, we get a 12.5% increase on our RIT. <clears throat> we were contacted, and, and Terrence and, and Anthony have been contacted several times by different companies wanting to take over this lease. Um, American Tower, which actually owns the tower and leases the ground, uh, would like to kind of lock this up for a time period and is offering the city a $20,000 one-time payment and then the continuation of monthly payments to continue uh, for, is it the next five? Eight successive. Eight, yeah. Eight successive periods of time of five years each. No, no, run that by me again. Under the terms of the existing lease, it's going to terminate, I think, in the year 2027. This is, and that's only for five periods of time. They're really buying three additional periods of time, extension. Uh, five years each? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a good deal, in my opinion. The only thing that is different from the lease and what they've requested is if the city ever has someone that offers to purchase that property, they would have a right of first refusal to buy it at whatever's being offered as well. They don't have to exercise it, but they can. Sounds pretty good to me. Now, they, they, they have offered a number of things. That the time-sensitive part is they want to have this back in their hands by November 25th. So that's before our next council meeting. Um, I know we've had several things. And uh, Terrence, did you have any comments on it? I don't really have any comments. I think you summed it all up. We've had several different proposals given to us, so made repeated contacts with the company, talked to several different people, mm -hmm. so this is the latest information. And, and our, our safety director wanted to make sure we had certificate of insurance from this company, which they have provided him. And the tower doesn't belong to us. It's the land. That's oh, sure, sure. The only term that I didn't really like that I don't really have a much trouble with is they want to have the ability to mortgage their interest there. Since they don't own the land, and if they didn't make their payments, whoever the lender is conceivably could foreclose on that property. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not, not foreclose on the property or foreclose on the tower? Well, that's what I want to make sure of. What I would like to make sure is, and I'm sure there's not going to be a problem, the only interest that the mortgage company would require would be their interest, and that's it. Yeah. Okay, well, it sounds like a pretty good and deal. And we have contact with the, there's an account manager that's out of uh, Florida. Uh, his name is Joe, and we've had, I've had several contacts with him because he offered a number of different options uh, of payments, and our treasurer said the best payment was take the one-time bonus and the monthly checks that we're continuing to get. It comes into the water department. They're well, very okay, and, and the increase each year would continue? They increase every five years. Uh, we currently get um, so. yeah, $7,593, and um, it will increase 12.5% um, October 1st of 2017. It will go to 8542 They send a monthly check. I checked with uh, Tracy. Oh, she's here. Tracy's here. And it comes in, it comes in monthly, Tracy? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, that would be... If the council authorizes the mayor to sign on behalf of the city. Okay, what's your pleasure? I'll make a motion to approve uh, the uh, lease agreement with American Tire. Second. Call the roll. Commissioner Ranella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yes. And Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay, what's this about scraper blades at the sewer plant? Uh, the scraper blades at the sewer plant, they're 13 years old and they're deteriorating pretty fast, so we're needing to get moving on this because it takes four or five weeks for it to get here. So I recommend that we take the bid from Schreiber Company for $10,800. Second. Uh, what is a scraper blade? It's those, you know, those big cylinder, well, those big cylinders out there. There's those mechanisms that go all the way around and it scrapes the top of the scum of all that stuff on there. So. Pretty nasty. <laughs> a scraper blade stirs yeah. the waste. That's <laughs> kind of like you do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, got a motion made and said call the roll. Right. Commissioner Ranella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. Mayor Butler. Yay. 
Okay, Jim. Yeah, uh, this item four is uh, uh, the fire department uh, lacked our permission uh, to submit a grant request to assistance to the firefighter grant. This grant will be used to uh, purchase an exhaust removal system in the in the truck bay area. In other words, if they need to start <coughs> an engine and, and let it run or whatever, it's, if it's the bad uh, weather's bad outside or do maintenance, uh, it'll it'll remove the exhaust. And the way I understand, there'll be some tubing that you can actually hook to the exhaust, like you see in some automotive shops. Uh, total cost of the exhaust system will be fifty-two thousand. Uh, two. That's two hundred. Yeah, fifty-two thousand two hundred. Uh, <laughs> grant share is 95% and the city share is 5%. And I'd like to make that my motion. And second that one. Second call roll. Commissioner Vanilla? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. And Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay, Novacom radio maintenance bill. Who's got that? Barabas. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he doesn't play for him anymore. Uh, this, this is just all part of the, of the maintenance agreement through the 911 board. Um, the money will come out of the nine, our 911 fund, so. Could she be any more vague? <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's, for, it's, for, it's for our radio maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, what, what, what is the total bill? Uh, for, for the, our part is $6,000. I know, but what's the total bill? 24. It's annual. Yeah, 24. 24. It's split up between the, the other members of the ETSB. This is just our part. They pay the exact same amount as we yeah. pay. Heron to pay six, the county to pay six, and the 911 board to pay six in addition yeah. to our six. Okay, that's sure we enough detail. Here. All right. Yeah. What's your point? I got my motion. I'll second that. Yeah. Call the roll. Commissioner Vanella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. Table number six. We're table number six. Yeah. Hey, if I could say something real quick on on, th on Halloween. I don't know if everybody's aware, but we had our first ever Halloween spectacular at the police department, and uh, I was praying we'd have 200 kids show up, and we had probably eight, nine hundred kids show up. Fantastic! Did you and have enough stuff to go around? Barely. By the end of the night, we had some packing up leaving by the end of the night, but uh, we had plenty of food. Uh, we, we served hot dogs, we served hamburgers, we had, uh, uh, in our garage, we had uh, Detectives Laura and Dete or Detective Dwyer and Detective Ramage. They, they had some uh, spooky stuff set up in the garage that, that people could walk through. Yeah. And um, <laughs> some of the family members of, office, of officers came and set up trunks or tables, uh, AMC Theater, uh, another insurance company. Uh, set up tables, so I mean it was just it was fantastic, and, and you know it was just we had a really good reception from the public. So congratulations um, to be commended. So Detective Dwyer well, and uh, Ramage did did most of the, did all the work on it, so you know they're to be commended on it. But it, yeah. it was a huge success. So that's great effort. Right. Yeah. Appreciate you it. Look at carrying it on. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, sure. Yeah, definitely. The beginning. Yeah, we and we had other. I had other business, people that own businesses approach me that night at the at the event and tell me, hey, next year we want to come. We want to set up a table. So they're already making plans for next year. So sounds it's, good. It's, it's great. Thank you. Okay, uh, Gail, what's the Fair Labor Standards business? I must say that uh, you couldn't even find a parking place near the police department. Uh, it was so packed with people and kids. It was really one of the best events I've seen in a long time. So um, compliments to your staff. And that was really good, Chief. Um, the Fair Labor Standards Act has uh, changed. I had it attached. Alice attached it to your uh, agenda package. We have a change on, and Fair Labor Standards deals with, uh, one of the things we deal with is a, uh, a salary or an exempt person from overtime and non-exempt. And for many, many years, the only thing we had to look at was there was a very small minimum amount of money that you had to give employees who were listed salary. And it told the number of hours and for them to be exempt and to treat them fairly. And the last year and a half, they have re revised this to be effective December 1st, and <clears throat> basically works at um, if you are a salary individual, 
in a municipality like us, we have to re we had to review job descriptions, review all of the people that were on salary, and to make sure that if they were on salary and there were a number of uh, exemptions that you can look at, and also a number of qualifications. And Steve, uh, Hale and I looked at them, and then Rep Barkey, as our labor attorney, looked at all the job descriptions. We had um, five people um, that were at or below, but marked as a salary exempt person. And so in order to be in compliance by December 1st, we'd have to make some recommendations, which uh, is the purpose of number seven and number eight on your agenda. <clears throat> number seven, we have two employees at the hub, and our recommendation would be to take um, Carly Williamson and Joe Vaughn, that's our sports and rec person and our fitness and wellness person, and move them to non-exempt so they would be eligible for overtime if it's needed and with approval of Chris, the general manager. Uh, these two, uh, our choice was to basically make them eligible for overtime or move their current salary, which I did put on your uh, sheet, um, to 47500 and so in communication with Chris, and as we looked at Steve, um, their current wage would just be divided by 2,080, which is the number of hours our employees would work if they were a full-time employee. And they would just be paid at their wage per hour. With overtime work. With, with overtime if it's, yeah. if it's needed. They would still be counted as a supervisor. They would be just a non-exempt supervisor. And so that would be, that's um, item number seven. Okay, what's your motion? That's my motion is to uh, reclassify Joe Vaughn and Carly Williamson uh, to non-exempt status in, in compliance with the Fair Labor Standards Act. I, I suppose those employees are in agreement with that. Uh, well, actually, they don't, we don't have choices. Okay. And, and we will be telling the employees after the council yeah. approves it. Well, there's, it's an act. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, uh, we, when, you, when you read the act, I mean, it's no it, it, doesn't, it doesn't give you any choices. And, and these changes were made, even made, I think, without the congressional action. Is that not right? That is correct. Yeah, so, I mean. It's a regulation, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Subject to change. I'll say, maybe, maybe that's one that uh, President-elect uh, Trump will change. It's subject to a lawsuit currently. Yeah, 22 states have called uh, joined together for a lawsuit. It's, it's a major problem for many. Uh, it, it sounds like another one of those uh, mm -hmm. executive order propositions. Well, it's similar, except it didn't come from the president. Well, it came from some, uh, some other dictator in the government, yeah. Yes. Okay. And the problem is, even though the lawsuits are outstanding, as we learned in Chicago at the Illinois Municipal League, there were quite a few sessions um, on it. And um, they said, basically, don't wait for the lawsuits to be settled. Uh, you need to follow the act yeah. now. Yeah. And it, it does not really change any of our, our things with employees. It only changes it on the books of how we yeah. have to classify people. OK. Yeah. I'll second. second. Jim has I'll a second. Second, second call roll. Commissioner Vanilla? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? <coughs> Yay. And in looking at, um, uh, on number eight, in looking at job descriptions and the hours employees work, and one thing, um, Steve Hale asked all of the supervisors about a year and a half ago to start keeping track of the number of hours they work. Although they're paid for basically 40 hours in a week or 2,080 in a year, all of the supervisors turn in if they work 10 hours or 12 or 15 or whatever every day. That was a state law. Yeah, it was a state law, but yeah. you started it yeah. earlier before the law. And <clears throat> so we have kept track. So we could look back and say how many hours our employees do work. In doing that, and, and with the Fair Labor Standards Act revisions, we had to look and say, okay, we have several people, and uh, Chris and I will work through Ran Oakley when we get to the hub session, section, because he's one of the ones that uh, is called into his his job was another one of the ones that hours and wage have and and responsibilities had some question but we also and we reviewed his job description
And then Vince Elliott, who's at the Civic Center, um, was another one that works um, a great number of hours because when the Civic Center has events, they might work a 12-hour day. Um, they might work a 15-hour day. And then get up at 5 o'clock the next morning and come in. And he worked <clears throat> and reviewed the number of hours. Uh, Steve's office reviewed the hours. And we would have done uh, what we're currently paying him at uh, 40, 42,840. Um, <clears throat> if we counted the number of hours he worked this past year, we should have paid him closer to 51,000 because he worked, and then the previous year, I mean, he has worked a lot of overtime. This past year, there's some, there were some extraordinary circumstances, but even when you average them out and take out about two weeks that uh, the director of the Civic Center was out, it was still a lot of time. So recommendation to the council would be to move Vince. He does have a lot of supervisor res responsibilities at the Civic Center to move his wage to 47500 Okay. A supervisor not exempt too. Is yeah, he would stay exempt. He is now exempt, mm -hmm. but he would stay exempt. <coughs> what Gail was saying there had had we paid him overtime, uh, he would have made to come out to fifty-one thousand. Yeah. Yes. And, and, what, and we tried to take out the extraordinary circumstances, yeah. but still averaged. Uh, to be fair, and that's what we want to do is to it be fair. Probably, and, you know, with with Josh not being gone due to his mm -hmm. his. Uh, Surgery, you know, we probably, you know, it probably would have worked out about the same as the forty-seven fives. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's okay. This your motion? Yes, sir. I'll second that. Call the roll. Commissioner Ranella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. Mayor Butler. Uh, Gail, does that apply to all supervisors? I mean, yeah. it's, it's, uh, Yes. Formula. Well, uh, the formula, yes, but we only had um, we only had five that were in question because of the the wage. It had to be forty seven. It had to be under forty seven thousand five hundred. Okay, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about the volleyball club. I am going to re defer to Chris. Did you have some? Okay. Okay. Um, the uniform purchase, what we have on the agenda there is Southern Illinois Select Volleyball Club, which is, you know, this will be the second season that we're running it, and it's a uniform purchase for those players. It's on average, we'll probably have this season 65 to 85 players, um, and that's the purchase of those uniforms. And um, the... What, the, what do the uh, players pay? The... the uh, um, they're paying um, 100, um, approximately $100 for the uniform, and, um, and that's an average of 75 players for that uniform purchase to purchase those up front. Um, we also have some coaches pullovers, um, and uh, so that's that's the initial purchase of those. We want to know, Chris, is what does a does a player pay any amount? Any money to is there be an enrollment the fee or a oh yes absolutely the um, the registrate um, um, the um, we, we made monies off the program last year yes the 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 projected net is going to be twenty one thousand two hundred fifty one dollars. Okay. Why didn't you and, say so? <laughs> yeah, now he feels um, because of our comments. Oh, that eases the pain. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. What yeah. what's your plan? And, <laughs> I'll wait that motion. <laughs> I'll second it. Second. Call the roll. Commissioner Ranella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. Mayor Butler. Yay. Okay. What's the part time employee? Um, we've got two um, in the aquatics department. We've got two um, part-time lifeguards um, that we'll be hiring that we uh, request for hire, and that's um, uh, Hayden Gunther, uh, and that's in a lifeguard position, as well as um, Brooklyn Hunsaker. Those are the two recommendations that we have this. Okay, this what's your pleasure? I'll make that motion to approve those hirings. Second. Second. Call the room. 
Commissioner Ranella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Mr. Webb? Yay. Mr. Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay, who's got the uh, job uh, description revision? Chris uh, is going to skip down mm -hmm. to HFG mm -hmm. uh, and then yes. I'll come back with yes. that. Uh, last council meeting um, I brought the news basically of the failure, mechanical failure of the um, aquatics, uh, um, East Aquatics Air Handler, the blower ha air handler, and uh, we did get HSG mechanical um, proposal, their quote back, and it was essentially, um, and we believe it would be less than this, but it's to not, not to exceed for replacement of that, of that assembly unit, not to exceed $20,475. Okay, uh, what's your pleasure? Make that motion. Second. Call the roll. Commissioner Ranella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Chris. Continuation of reviewing job descriptions. As uh, one was reviewing job descriptions, uh, Chris Jorgantis and I sat down and reviewed the job description of the uh, maintenance coordinator and <coughs> just for the council's background the job descriptions were all put together for the hub originally by sports facilities when we hired them to help us begin the hub so some of the job descriptions has not been revisited or wage or pay on since since then which is really our second year currently that we're on so chris and i started reviewing this and realized that um, the operations and maintenance, or the maintenance coordinator does more duties than possibly uh, a person that were not even on the job description. So what I uh, added to the agenda after Chris and I had gone through uh, this was adding uh, to recommend to the council that we change a job title to building operation and maintenance coordinator. Um, the hub is a huge building that has a lot of operating parts. And before the doors even open on a day, somebody has to make sure all those parts run. And so we have a, a maintenance person who also makes sure everything works and puts schedules together. And we also have vendors or a lot of contracts with companies who do everything from maintain the fire system, the fire, suppression, the fire safety system, to the alarm systems to all of the pool pumps. So we have people coming, vendors, and maintaining those contracts, <coughs> which as you know, besides all the working parts, we have all the people. So to assist the general manager, we would like to, um, that Chris and I would recommend approving a job description for a building operations and maintenance coordinator, which is currently one of our existing employees, but at a, a salary of 47,500, which would make him a supervisor um, over the building facility, uh, still working under uh, our general manager, but in charge of the operations and the technical parts of the building that have moving parts. Does this include the pool area or the? Yeah, it, well, he. Entire facility. Okay. Yeah. He, and we will have, you know, essentially, I mean, that's over, encompasses the entire building. Okay. Okay, now, will he be. Um, uh, responsible to Chris. Yes. Yes. Okay. Everybody's, I mean, they're all responsible to Chris, but it puts somebody also that he could, Chris could turn around. We have a person now, and, and that's actually the, the next piece of this, uh, was to approve the job description, but Ryan Oakley, who is currently, uh, does all hands that Chris doesn't do. I want to make sure that everybody has to report to somebody. Oh, yeah. So we he, can, he reports to it. So we can set responsibility. Yes. Okay. Yes. And if, if Chris wasn't there, he would call. If there's a problem and Chris is out of town and not reachable, they call Brian Fisher or myself. Okay. So, I mean, we've got our, our, our witch. Um, but Ryan Oakley responds currently if there's an alarm system that goes off, if there's a pool pump, if the heat pump's not working. Uh, there's a lot of alarms that go off and he responds all, all times of night. We're both alerted, but he, you know, on a technical basis, I mean, I can handle some of those things, but he's, he's so adapted at all of the systems in the, in the building yeah. from, from pre-opening, construction, and all that. So, so his knowledge base. Yeah, I, I, I want to make sure that uh, somebody is responsible for every aspect of the mm -hmm. operation and then make sure that they are responsible to 
You. Okay. And well, and part of this is we've, as we've kind of realigned some of the responsibilities, um, <coughs> looking at this, this gives a kind of a relief for Chris to have someone who assumes part of the responsibility, because right now we have nobody that, yeah. I mean, he does, uh, the current maintenance okay. coordinator assumes the responsibility, but he gets paid, um, he doesn't get paid for assuming all of it. It's well, so not going to leave a void because he's going to continue to do the other job as well. Is that what you're saying? Well, he would he would basically continue to supervise the people. I mean, if there's a, something to clean up, mm -hmm. everybody helps. Right. I mean, the, the hub you know is everybody cleans up things. Uh, but if there's a main thing that needs done, technical-wise, maintenance-wise, I mean, he's the first one to help delegate or do it. Yeah. Okay. So he wouldn't be just a supervisor. He would be a hands-on working person. And, and at this... Uh, Salary of forty-seven five, then that gives him exempt status as yes. well. Yes, right at it. Okay. Right at it. Okay. Okay. What's your pleasure? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Call Rome. Commissioner Vanella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Mr. Goss. Yay. And Mayor Butler. <clears throat> And then the D part or the, is to, uh, for the council to promote Ryan Oakley, who's the current maintenance coordinator, to the pr position of building operations and maintenance coordinator. I'll make that motion to promote Ryan Oakley to building and operations maintenance coordinator. Second. Call the room. Commissioner Ranella? Yay. Mr. Hightower? Yay. Mr. Webb? Yay. Mr. Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I regret to uh, inform you, but uh, uh, Steve Hale has tendered his uh, resignation as a member of the City Revolving Loan Board. Okay, what's this about the Engineering Services Agreement? Who's got that? Oh, there he is. I could talk to. Um, last meeting was um, we've got kind of a blanket agreement for various things for uh, miscellaneous stuff that we handle for the city um, but some of these projects as they become either very defined scopes uh, or of a certain size it's normally better to have an agreement with the city that's specific to that um, these two projects the next two are in that category uh, one is the Rolling Hill subdivision which we're proceeding on I think uh, a few months ago uh, Glenn and Brent had a public hearing with those uh, in those people in that, that area um, so we're basically designing a sewer system similar to the spring garden system for extending that sewer. Um, and the number 11 is, is the same thing. It's just a project that's become of a certain size we're working on for replacing a water main. And I think you guys have talked about, I think Commissioner Goss, I think you brought this up before from the council as far as part of uh, Market Street, uh, replacing part of that and get it back and restored and get back in an order. So those are two projects we're <coughs> proceeding on with. So Sort of a comprehensive agreement. Right, it's kind of like the agreements we passed before. It just defines that this uh, the basically sets the budget for for us, sets the budget for there, and I think it's also easier for handling project of this size through city hall and, and setting the budgets and approvals by council specific to that project. Okay, what's your pleasure? Well, let's, let's do the uh, the number ten first, and I'll make that motion to uh, to approve that agreement between uh, Clarita Ziegler and uh, Rowan Hill Subdivision. Okay, I'll second. Call the roll. <coughs> Mr. Ranella? Yay. Mr. Hightower? Yay. Mr. Webb? Yay. Mr. Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? <coughs> Yay. Okay, now what? I'll make a motion to approve uh, an agreement between Clarita Ziegler and the City of Marion for a water main uh, extension on South Market Street. I'll second. Call the roll. Mr. Ranella? Yay. Mr. Hightower? Yay. Mr. Webb? Yay. Mr. Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay, what's this about uh, tax increment? It's financing. me again. <clears throat> um, number 12, we have, uh, we're on the beginning of uh, having our TIF consultants look at a uh, TIF, and we would call it Meadowland Parkway TIF. That's because it is on the north side of Meadowland Parkway and across from the airport. It's fr uh, primarily two large pieces of tracts of property. Um, one currently has a, uh, Dr. Craig Smith is uh, taking under construction a new veterinarian office at a dog park. Um, it will be on one side and then he additionally bought other uh, land through there that he will be subdividing and turning into business lots. 
which is a huge expense because he'll be doing roads, sewers, um, water, all those infrastructure things. And then next to that, uh, the estate of Jean Webb um, has a large trek where right now uh, as uh, horses have, have grazed and it's pretty much just farmland. This is also um, land that has to be um, surveyed, graded, plowed, everything done, uh, put into subdivision lots, a number of things. It would be basically uh, either for businesses or large industry, something. Uh, we would like to do this as a TIF, and the first part would be starting an interested party registry. This is by the TIF, Illinois TIF law. We have to establish if somebody's interested, they notify Alice to have their name so that any information comes out regarding this TIF, they would, be, uh, they would get a copy of it. Uh, a dog park, is that where you park dogs? Yeah, around a pond. <clears throat> oh, okay. I just hadn't heard of a dog park. <laughs> <laughs> it would be it would be not a public dog park. I don't think I think it would be a private dog park. But it has a big pond and dogs can you can walk your dogs around an area. Do, do they do they have coin meters for them to park yeah. a dog? I mean. <laughs> hey, Gail, under under the the TIF laws, I know if somebody is within 750 feet of that T, TIF, were were <laughs> We're bound to. Uh, uh, we have to notify them. Notify them. Is, mm -hmm. this, is this just anybody that wants information on that? Well, this is just an. Uh, that 750? This is just. No, this isn't the 750 feet law. This is just an interested party where if you're interested in this TIF, you just ask, you list your name. Anybody. 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 And then another part of the TIF Act, after we establish the public hearing date, which is the next one, another part will be then we will do a 750 boundary map of 750 feet uh, perimeter around that TIF area has to be notified that we will be uh, having a public hearing. And we, uh, our GIS coordinator puts that map together along with Terrence's great help. Okay, what's your pleasure on establishing interested parties registry? I make that motion. Second. Call the room. Commissioner Ranella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. And Mayor Butler. Yay. Okay, ordinance proposed 3358 to establish date for public hearing for the Middleland Parkway. What's that about? This is another requirement of the TIF law to establish a public hearing date with the council. It would be Monday, January 9th at 6 p.m. Why so far in the future? We have to have so many days between, um, is it 40 days or something? There's a, something oh, in the okay. uh, interest, the ordinance that says you have to allow so many days to notify the public uh, of, yep. the, of the okay. public hearing. We will also have a joint review board with the taxing bodies on the same date. Very good. What's your pleasure with ordinance 3358? So moved. Second. Call room. Commissioner Ranella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? No, Yay. No. Commissioner Goss? Yay. And Mayor Butler? Yay. Uh, if I might call the council's attention, if um, Alice has, uh, Alice, did you pass these out yet? They're in their box. In your mailbox, you have a document that's a draft of the, um, or some of you already have it, a draft of the TIF goals and objectives and some of the um, estimated uh, projects that could be in there. And when we estimate projects, we put in uh, commercial businesses, offices, um, different type of light industry that are recommendations that might be in that area. Um, we don't, it, it, we, so we have to kind of speculate on what would be there, but it, it helps generate what we would anticipate will uh, be a revenue for that TIF area. Okay, very good. Um, discussion on the Hillwater Tower lighting. Previously authorized <coughs> to spend 14000 but now the figure has uh, risen to 21500 You want to tell yes, us about I that? Yes, I do. Tom? We originally had $14,000, but uh, using the same equipment, there's some installation problems that FW came up with that raised that to 17000 but they also recommended, Glenn, you can correct me, but they recommended that we go with LED lighting that uh, has a 50,000-hour life 
versus 20,000 hour on the lot we originally thought. And it takes about a third less electricity or power to run it. Am I right on that, Glenn? Correct. And uh, I think we'd be in the long run, we'll make money by buying the, uh, spending the 21,000 uh, on the uh, cost of operating it and uh, also be a lot brighter. Yeah, you're getting more intensity, more yeah. Sounds like it's more bang for a buck. Yeah, I, I think it's a good deal, but I'd like to have a council authority to proceed. Did, on did you say those lights would last 50,000 hours? Am I right on that, Glenn? I'm not certain of the exact hours. And approximately. I know that it has two and a half to three times the life of the regular bulb that they originally started. He, he said 50,000 when I was at your office, I recall that. Okay. And the other was 20,000, so it was two and a half. Thousand. How many centuries will that cover? You'll still be here. <laughs> it's only like what five or six years or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, just say twelve hours a night for uh, three hundred and sixty-five days. What well, fifty thousand mount up pretty quick? It will. Yeah. But uh, okay, that's your motion. That's my motion. I'll second. It. Yes. He's I'll got second. A second. Second. Call roll. Commissioner Ranella. Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. Or, okay. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. And Mayor Butler. Yeah. I read your name and that's what I said. Okay, anybody else have something we need to take up? And if not, this is a regular meeting. I have bills. bills. Oh, you want to approve the bills? Do we want to pay them? Steve we got says, the money? Steve says okay, we do. Go ahead. I make a motion to pay the monthly bills as funds become available. Second. Call the roll. Commissioner Ranella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. And Mayor Butler? Yay. Do we have consent? We do not. Good. And as you all can see, I'm up here in a Cub shirt. Uh, Camera. I made a uh, poor decision this summer, and uh, no. <laughs> and I bet our police chief that if the Cubs won the World Series, I would wear a Cub shirt to a council meeting, and we hit them down three games to one, come back and tied them in the eighth, and we still faltered, and here I am today. I tell you, you're a Card fan. I am a diehard Cardinal fan. Nobody's oh, perfect, though. <laughs> you know, and as my, my poor father used to say, and my boys put up and asked me what in the world I was doing, he's, you know, He's, he always made the comment, a blind hog will find a nut on occasion. And, <laughs> the after, Cubs did it. and after 108 years, they did. Yeah. Okay, for the cards, wait till next year. Yeah. No, we, we, you know, we're, we're, we're still 11 World Series up on them, and, and oh, that's so many Nash, yeah, so, you know, we, we have, we've developed tradition, and they're just, they're they're trying to start something there, but they'll money a call and they'll all leave and they'll go back to their ways. <laughs> okay, all right, Angelo. Chris, um, I've gotten some interest and in people have approached me about having more, like snacks, more healthy choices at the hub. Is that something that you guys are looking to do in the future? Okay. Okay. That's my sincere attempt to do that, and uh, we've got to find things that we can keep fresh and we can uh, get those cells. Um, sure. So we, uh, so we will certainly look at that. Okay, good deal. Uh, do you have any specific recommendations that people? Yeah, in? I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, all right. <laughs> I do have a question. Uh, is, how, how is the membership holding up? Excellent. We've got a, it's a little bit of a slower time right now relative to activity. We're starting to pick up now, but we're at about 7,500 members. Uh, uh, the, the reason I wonder is um, uh, I drive by Gold's Gym occasionally, and I don't know how many people they have, but their parking lot is usually uh, pretty full. And I know that we have two more right. fitness operations, one going uh, just south of the... Uh, Exactly. Uh, the newest one here is, you know, in Southwest. And uh, they've got their niches, and we, we are seeing attrition here and there a little bit, where there's uh, people are going to try those new places, like they tried us. And uh, we're going to maintain our quality of service and our quality of facility. Good. And, uh, I know that some of those will come back. If it's right for them there, I know they're probably going to stay. But uh, we offer so much to families, and 
um, and individuals yeah. at, at a competitive rate for for a regular facility. So that's good. I, I think. Yeah. Uh, they're very friendly, by the way. They're, okay. Yeah. Uh, where's that? Their staff. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was thinking you were saying. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. We will we'll maintain that service and that. And that yeah. Service. Very good. Did you have anything else? No. All right. Jim. What about you? Yeah. Uh, police department is busy in October. Uh, had 17 city ordinance violations, 26 warrant arrests, 442 incidents reported. 120 traffic accidents and 11 DUIs. So wow, 11. Man, man. man. That's an ad 10 of them. Either right? we're getting more <laughs> drinkers or. Uh, Give me the Oktoberfest, maybe. <laughs> World, World Series. <laughs> yeah, had, uh, some of those had to be Cub fans yeah. celebrating. <laughs> we appreciate the hard work police department and the fire department both do. So. Sounds good. Nothing. John, nothing. Uh, Mayor, I have one more thing. Uh, as, as you remember, on October 8th, we had our electronic recycling. Yeah. Uh, they told us at that time that they thought that we had uh, 12 or 13,000 pounds of electronics. Uh, got an email uh, on November the 3rd, and it was 18,130. Yeah. So it was, that was up considerably. And... Uh, we we had to use the old uh, city of Marion inloader to help shut the doors, so we, we knew we had a pretty good uh, uh, batch of electronics. But uh, that was that's very successful, and I know John and I both look forward to continuing that uh, service to the city. So uh, uh, that keeps it off of the sides of our roads. Sounds good. Our next regular meeting, I guess, will be November the 28th, which will be after Thanksgiving. So I wish everybody a happy, plentiful Thanksgiving. Thank you. Having said that, I'll clean up. you as well. We don't clean up this. We have fall cleanup next week, but I don't have the days, Alice. Well, it started today. I know, but. Uh, and it goes, through, it goes through. It goes through all this week and Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week. Okay. Yeah. Everybody get that clean up. Fall clean up. What's the time? From, from the, seven o'clock till three o'clock. Yeah, and the day is started today and goes through Wednesday and next, next, next week. Next week, yes. All right. Here okay. we, I've got I've got it right in front of me, Mayor. Uh, Monday the, the the day started on the southeast section, and they will re canvas that tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday they'll do the northeast section with a re canvas the next day. Friday be northwest with a re camp and then on the uh, the uh, 21st, that's next Monday, they'll do the southwest section. Tuesday and Wednesday of November 22nd, 23rd, they'll re canvas northwest and southwest. So uh, you have to bind all your limbs up, they can't be any more than two inches in diameter, and it'll be yard waste. Only all your leaves have got to be boxed or bagged. And I've got about 12 bags waiting on us at my house. Thank you, Alice. I forgot to say it. Thank you. No, no he resigned from my house. No, the uh, revolving loan fund, not that. Yeah. Okay. It's not revolving loan. No, it's not the revolving loan fund. No, it's, it's, it's downtown, downtown restoration. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Uh, that uh, having been said, uh, I think a motion to adjourn would be in order. I'll make that motion. Second. Call the roll. Commissioner Ranella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. And Mayor Butler. Yay. Can't shut mine off. Shut well, mine doesn't get picked up until next Monday. Sure. Mm.